I was looking through some of the videos and I came across a video that um, Troy family just recently did and she was doing an update about the college scandal. Don't worry, we ain't forget about it. Be just because there's a lot of other stuff that has been going on and it has been a lot doesn't mean we forgot about that whole scandal thing. And I might actually do another video talking about that, but I wanted to bring up this point. So y'all are looking at this picture right here. And those of you who are of a certain age know who these two are. You already know who that is on the right in the picture. But in case that y'all are very young, and I highly doubt it because I looked at the analytics and my age, the age range that I match with, would know who this is in this picture. But this is John Stamos. And of course, that's Lori Loughlin. Now, this picture is back in the early 90s when they were on the hit television show Full House. I can admit it. I watch Full House, and many of you who are listening to the sound of my voice right now watched it too. Don't try to act like you didn't. But, of course, on the show, they played, well, he played Uncle Jesse, and she played Becky. And, of course, on the show, they were a couple, and they got married. They had twins, and, you know, all of that good stuff. But the reason why I'm bringing this up right now is because now John Stamos, who I'm actually shocked didn't speak out sooner, finally has spoken out in defense of Lori Lachlan. And this is what he had to say. He says that the punishment that his former co-star Lori Lachlan is getting does not fit the crime. Really, John? I mean, I know you want to be on cold and everything like that, but no. He must have missed the part about, you know, lying about her and her husband lying to get their daughters into the school and saying they was going to be these athletes or were these athletes and spending out all this money to get them ahead into these schools that they most likely took the position of somebody else to get. I'm going to go ahead and read this article coming from the Mercury News. It says, it's understandable that John Stamos would want to speak carefully about the federal criminal troubles of his good friend and Full House co-star Lori Lachlan. It's even understandable that Stamos would want to talk up the positive qualities of Lachlan. He got to know when they played Jesse and Aunt Becky Kasopoulos on the beloved sitcom and its Fuller House reboot. But in, in a new interview with GQ, Stamos said he wondered if there was even a crime. That's an interesting way of Stamos being quick being quote unquote careful in regards to his friend being charged in the nationwide college admission scandal. I'm going to say it right now. John Stamos knows what Lori Lachlan did was wrong. He knows what she did was wrong, but he doesn't want to speak out ill against a woman that he has worked alongside for many years. Like at that, it was at one point when they was at, like if you was around back then when they were always rate like some of the best TV couples, they were usually always in like that top 10. So, you know, they had a very solid working relationship back then. So I can see why he would want to come out and defend her. But at the same time, if you want to be completely honest, one of the best things, one of the best things you could ever do for a friend is be honest with them. And right now he's not being honest with not only her, but with us. And himself, he knows he's he's lying to himself right now. He knows what she did was wrong. He going to ask, was it even a crime? Yes, it was a crime. Why do you think that they are on the hot seat right now? Her Felicity Huffman and those other 48 people that they just kind of refuse to not talk about. It goes on to say. I want to wait until the trial happens. Stamos, age 56, told GQ. Whatever happened, I'm pretty sure that the punishment is not equal to the crime if there was even a crime. Lachlan and her husband, Massimo Giannulli, have pleaded not guilty to charges that they paid $500,000 in bribes to college admissions consultant William Rick Singer to get their daughters Olivia Jade and Isabella admitted into the University of Southern California. Lachlan and Giannulli's defense is that they didn't think the money they paid to Singer and his alleged accomplices at USC were bribes then what the hell would you call it then? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What would you call it? Rather, the Bel Air couple intend to argue that the money they wired to Singer, nonprofit foundation, and sent to a USC Associated Athletic Director were legitimate donations to the university attorney, William Tratt, explained at a court hearing Tuesday. 
According to Track's line of thinking, Lachlan and Giannulli were doing what other wealthy parents do to give their children an advantage when applying to an elite school. They make sizable donations to the school. But Trash arguments ignores the evidence that Singer's scheme involved having Olivia Jade, age 19, and Isabella, age 20, admitted to USC on the false pretense of being crew athletes, according to the complaint against the couple. Stamos also seems to be unaware or to have forgotten this key element of the case against his friend and her fr and her fashion designer husband. Neither Olivia Jade nor Isabella was known to participate in the sport, according to the complaint. See, basically what they did was they if they would have just slid Rick Williams single the money and just did that and not over embellished by saying they were a part of a crew team, they probably would have got away with it. But, oh, no, they had to tack on to the part that they were a part of this crew team, which is which is basically a rowing team and saying they were athletes, knowing damn well they never rowed a boat a day in their life. At least not on an athletic level. It says, meanwhile, emails between Singer and Gia Newley show that their father show that the father had his daughter's pose on rowing machines. The complaint shows they had to make it look authentic. Gia Newley then sent these quote unquote action photos to Singer to be used to create false athletic profiles for them. The complaint also shows that Gia Newley became angry after a guidance counselor at his daughter's Los Angeles prep school raised red flags about their college applications in which they said they were crew athletes. The counselor at the all-girls Catholic school became concerned in the application she and her sister Isabella submitted to USC may have contained misleading information. See, like I said, they embellished. They over-embellished. That's why they're in the hot seat right now. Like I said, if they did not go overboard with it, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion right now. When Lachlan and Giannulli learned about the counselor raising questions, Giannulli went to the high school to confront the counselor and convince him that his daughter indeed participated in crew, according to the complaint. As for the couple's claims that they didn't know their payments to singers were bribes, a former federal prosecutor calls this defense weak. Niyama Ramani said in an earlier interview with the news organization that this argument completely contradicts the evidence in the case. When people are legitimately making a donation to a university, they don't have to pay someone to make their kids appear to be athletes. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, they went overboard with it, literally. Who tried, said Romani, who tried to dr try drug and fraud cases when he was in the U.S. Attorney's Office in San Diego from 2010 to 2012. Romani, who was in private practice in Los Angeles, also said people making legitimate donations work directly with the university's advancement department and don't go through a third-party nonprofit. See, they just messed up their stuff all the way around. They didn't even go to the right people to give this sizable donation. Stamos, of course, is not a legal expert and might not understand such distinctions when weighing in on his friend's case. Otherwise, in his brief comments to GQ, about Lachlan, Lamos stayed in his, I'm sorry, Stamos stayed in his lane when he admitted he was perplexed about everything that is going on. Stamos said he still regards Lachlan as a close friend and said he had talked to her the morning in March when news hit she was being charged with federal crimes, which include fraud and money laundering. I tell you one thing that has been strange is this. Honestly, I can't figure it out. It doesn't make sense. Well, that's probably what you should have ran with at first, John, before you said that the punishment doesn't fit the crime. They laid it out right there for you. The punishment does fit the crime. And another dumb thing that Lori and her husband are doing is pleading not guilty. I mean, they are the only people. I, I said it before. I'll say it now. They are the only people in this whole scandal that are pleading not guilty. Everyone else is following the script and pleading guilty. And that's why they're going to get slaps on the wrist. If they drag this stuff out, it's going to be because of her and her husband. Well, at least their portion of it anyway. But, John, you should have just stayed quiet and stayed in your lane with this one. You know that that punishment fits the crime. I mean, I know she's your friend and all, but let's not lie here. We know that what she did was and her husband was messed up. And quite honestly, I think her da the daughters had to be in and on it, too, because they know they weren't on no crew team. Like, why would they agree to just take a picture on a boat and then, like, not even ask where was that picture going? I mean, I truly believe that they were in on it, too. But the parents definitely were going to take most of the blame for it. And that's only natural because they were the ones that pretty much set it all up. And how do you give money to a person that's a third that's a non third party person? Like, really? Like, did you even investigate this person? Like you could have gave this per this money to a person that could have been like another Bernie Madoff and you would have lost on half a million dollars. 
But y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments, and I'll talk to you in the next one.